In part one of trigonometric graphs, we talked about changing the amplitude and the period of graphs. I decided to separate that video from the one in which we talk about phase shifts because the graphs are going to start to get a little more complex, but hopefully we can keep them simplified to the best of our ability. So now we're going to talk about shifting graphs left and right. So in these generalized equations, y equals a sine of k, x minus b, and y equals a cosine k, x minus b, we already know that a is the amplitude. k is a value we use to find the period. The phase shift is going to be b. An appropriate interval for graphing one period of a graph that's had a phase shift is to start at b and to end at b plus 2 pi over k. And this is what's going to help us out with our graphing. Let's start back with one period of our general sine graph and talk about how phase shifts are going to work. Let's start by talking about y is equal to the sine of x minus pi over 3. First of all, the amplitude is still 1 because the number in front of sine is 1. The period is still going to be 2 pi because k is 1 and 2 pi over 1 is 2 pi. So the only thing that's being done to this graph is a phase shift. b is pi over 3. This graph is being shifted b units to the right. How do I know it's to the right? Well, think back to this. That is our shifting to the right. And this was our shifting to the left. So I'm going to take each point on that graph and shift it pi over 3 units to the right, which means I'm going to start my interval at pi over 3, and I'm going to end my interval at pi over 3 plus 2 pi. Well, what's pi over 3 plus 2 pi? It's, uh, let's see, so 7 pi over 3. So pi over 3 is going to be around here somewhere. So 7 pi over 3 must be over here somewhere. So I'm literally going to take all the ordered pairs and shift them slightly to the right. Notice that I'm not doing anything extravagant in order to shift. Oops, I should be ending here and not there. Notice I didn't do anything extravagant to move all my points a little bit to the right. And I showed you that I'm starting at pi over 3 and I'm ending at 7 pi over 3. What would be smack dab in the middle? Well, if you add pi over 3 plus 7 pi over 3, you get 8 pi over 3. Divide that by 2, you're going to get 4 pi over 3. And that's really all I need to draw a decent graph. Now let's talk about what happens if you move the other direction. If I do y is equal to the sine of x plus pi over 6, this is going to be a shift to the left pi over 6. So my interval is going to start at negative pi over 6. Why does it start at negative pi over 6? Because I'm shifting to the left pi over 6. That should be a parenthesis. And then it's going to end at negative pi over 6 plus 2 pi. Negative pi over 6 plus 2 pi is going to be 11 pi over 6. So this graph if we say that this is negative pi over 2, negative pi over 6 must be around here somewhere. Remember, it's like 30 degrees. So everything's going to get shifted a little bit less to the left, but just a little bit. And then there would be my graph. This would be my 11 pi over 6. This is negative pi over 6. And halfway in between, if you add negative pi over 6 plus 11 pi over 6, you get 10 pi over 6. Divided by 2 is 5 pi over 6. And that's a relatively 
decent graph of a shift to the left. Let's put all of these things together now and try to draw a decent sketch of y equals 3 sine of 2 x minus 4 or pi over 4. So let's look at all the different components going on in this equation. We have our amplitude which is 3. So the graph is going to go up to 3 and down to negative 3. The period is going to be 2 pi over k which is going to be 1 pi. That means that instead of my graph going 2 pi in length it's going to go 1 pi in length. B is pi over 4. Because of the minus sign, this is a graph that's going to get shifted to the right, pi over 4. So a good interval for this um, particular graph is going to be from B to B plus 2 pi over K. So it's going to be from pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4. So here I'm going to draw my graph. So here's my coordinate plane. It's going to go up to 3 and down to negative 3. I'm going to start at pi over 4. And I'm going to end at 5 pi over 4. What's the graph of sine going to look like? It starts and stops on the x-axis. Halfway in the middle it hits the x-axis again. In between those, it's going to hit its maximum, and in between the next two, it's going to hit its minimum. So the graph is going to look like this. So where are these points in between? Well, to find out what's halfway between pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4, you add them and divide by 2. So when you add them, you get 6 pi over 4. Divided by 2 is 3 pi over 4. What's halfway between pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4? 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. Between 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4 is 4 pi over 4, which is 1 pi. And there's the graph of y equals 3 sine of 2 x minus pi over 4. Let's sketch the graph of y equals 3 fourths cosine 2x plus 2 pi over 3. The first thing I want you to notice is that this is not exactly in the format that the other problem was in. So in order for it to be in the format that looks like the other problem, I need to factor a 2 out of the parentheses. Remember, factor means divide, so I'm going to divide out a 2, and when I do that, I'm left with x plus 2 pi over 3 divided by 2 is pi over 3. Now I'm ready to go about finding all the components of the problem. The amplitude is 3 fourths. That means the graph goes up to 3 fourths, down to negative 3 fourths. k is 2, which means that the period is 2 pi over 2, or 1 pi. Because of the plus sign, b is going to be shifting to the left pi over 3. If it's shifting to the left, pi over 3, that means it starts at negative pi over 3. And it's going to end at negative pi over 3 plus 2 pi over k. Negative pi over 3 plus pi is negative 2 pi over 3. Not negative, positive, sorry. So now I'm ready to draw this graph. I'll make this 3 fourths and negative 3 fourths because I'm trying to make this not anything extravagant. The graph is going to start at negative pi over 3 and it's going to end at 2 pi over 3. Because it's a cosine curve, it's going to start and stop its period at the maximum. Halfway in between it'll hit its minimum. Well, what's halfway in between negative pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3? Well, add them, divide by 2. When you add them, you get pi over 3. Pi over 3 divided by 2 is pi over 6. And then halfway in between these is where it hits the x-axis. What's halfway in between negative pi over 3 and pi over 6? Oh, I didn't do a very good job of drawing this picture. I probably should have found out where the uh, tick marks were in the first place. 
uh, negative pi over 3 plus pi over 6 is going to be negative 1 pi over 6 and so and divided by and divided by ooh, I should go back a page sorry and divided by 2 it's going to be negative 12 negative pi over 12 so actually it's over here sorry and then halfway between pi over 6 and 2 pi over 3 it's going to be, let's see, 2 pi over 3 is 4 pi over 6, so it's going to be 5 pi over 6 divided by 2 is 5 pi over 12. And that's negative pi over 12. So the graph actually goes like that, and that's where it hits the x-axis. And that's the end of part 2.